Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Best Practices Show. My name is Kirk Barrett, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best practices in all of dentistry. And I got a great one for you today. We keep getting this question, hourly or salary. What do I do? How do I do this? Well, I thought instead of us trying to answer it, let's bring on one of our good friends. And I brought in Robin Reese from Bent Erickson. She's brilliant. She knows the ins and outs of this. And so we ask her the tough questions in this episode. And she also brings up like how to do this and what exempt and non-exempt means and why you have to comply and how you need to do an audit to do it the right way. So check out the episode. I know you're going to love it. And we'll see you soon. Welcome back to the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the country. And this question keeps coming up over and over and over and over. I don't think I can say over enough. Again, is hourly or salary? I mean, I'm trying to run this dental practice. I don't know if I should have everybody hourly or salary. You know, I don't know either. Actually, I have my opinions, but uh, I, I'm also careful enough to know I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand these things. So that's why I brought in my good friend, Robin Reese from Bent Erickson today. And you're going to see she's really smart on the details, which I'm not. And we're going to answer the question, hourly or salary, or at least help you with that today. Now, one other thing before we just get started, I just want to say thank you guys for showing up. A lot of people showing up going, what is this? Hey, this is a podcast for dentists. And you can expect to hear from us every Monday and every Friday. We're going to bring you something. And it's usually going to be something to solve your problems. I got a lot. I don't really bring a whole lot to the table other than I got a lot of friends that know stuff. And so uh, I'm going to bring my friends that know stuff and solve a lot of your biggest problems in dental practice. So keep in your dental practice. So keep showing up. Keep sending us suggestions or challenges that you guys need because every time you come here, I want you to have a better practice. And when you do that, it creates a little bit better life. So that's what it's all about. Now, I want to introduce my friend today, Robin. I've known you for a long time. You always bring value. And I mean, always. And so one of the things, and I say this every time I see you now, is that when I was having a full out panic attack, you were one of my trusted resources in the world when we were dealing with things that we didn't even know what was going on called the COVID conference. And, you know, dentists were panicking and I'm like, I don't know the answer to this. And we would just call on you week after week after week. So I'm grateful for you. Now, some of the people that might be listening to this podcast don't know who you are. I want you to tell them who you are and what you do before we get into this important subject. Awesome, Kirk. Thank you so much. Always fun to spend time with you and see your face. Um, so I am Robin Reese with Bent Erickson and Associates. Bent Erickson is an employment compliance uh, human resource company based out of Eugene, Oregon. Uh, we've been doing this for 35 or more years, and it's all we do. We make sure that dental practices know what they're supposed to be doing. We try to keep them out of what I call hiring jail mm. <laughs> and to make sure that they're doing the things that are going to protect their practice. And so I have the pleasure of working with Tim, Adrian, Alan, Rebecca, Trisha, uh, Michelle, all of them at headquarters. And they make me look smart. So I need to give kudos to uh, my team at headquarters because they do all the digging, the research, the, our team of lawyers, everybody is there to support our dental practices to make sure that you are creating wonderful relationships with your team members. And you're right. This is the question that happens over and over and over again. <laughs> so I'm excited to talk to you about it today. Yeah, I'm excited too. And now I, I'm just going to say this. If you're a dentist listening and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to save money and do my own HR and like put all the... Don't. 
Just don't. Like, that's super silly. It's weirder than it's ever been. And there are so many details, and you would hurt your brain, and you probably would do it wrong. So uh, it, you guys are just an incredible resource. I throw questions at you. I don't even know if they're questions. They're just challenges coming our way. And each state has their own, you know, I, I, I actually think we could do an entire series almost every single day on at will you know, all these details that like people have to know about when it comes to employing team members and, uh, you know, your team members are your greatest asset. And so instead of us going all over the place, let's just get into it. Now, before we get into the how and what, like the hourly salary, why is that such an important topic if you're a dentist listening to this? Well, as you often talk about, Kirk, it's all about the predictability. Right. So people think that when I give somebody a salary, it's predictable. They know when they're going to get their paycheck, how much they're going to get paid. Um, and you know, it does. It works for a lot of people. But the caveats that go along with the salary are, are, are twofold. One is classification of the employee is first and foremost. And that is, are you exempt or non-exempt? No matter how you pay somebody, hourly, salary, commission, per diem in blueberry pie, it really has to determine, it has to be determined whether they're exempt or non-exempt. And that's according to the Federal uh, Fair Labor Standards Act. And that's part of the wage and hour division laws that govern how much taxes are taken out and, and all that good stuff. So to, to back up for just a moment, to be exempt, you must meet um, for criteria. And what it really all, and I won't go into the details, but what it really means is how much control, how much authority, what are your actual duties, and do you have um, authority to make uh, decisions in, quote, matters of significance? And so meeting the exempt requirements, most often, 99% of dental team members don't meet the federal definition. So they're pretty much they're, they're non-exempt employees. Give me but, an example of like what an exempt employee would do. Sure. Or like. Great question. And that would be a more administrative managerial uh, position. Somebody who maybe is in a group practice, manages, travels to several different locations. Uh, somebody who's not sitting at the front desk answering the phone. So that is somebody who is not going to be considered exempt. They do payroll. They have an authority to make a $100,000 purchase for the practice. Um, they ha have the ability to hire and fire. They represent the doctor when the doctor is not there. Um, it, but keep in mind, while that might be some office managers or some practice administrators, you have to meet all the, the criteria, not just one part of the criteria. So that's where I think some gray area is that practices don't really understand what the definition is. They also have to meet a certain salary uh, income level, and then they can also be classified as highly compensated employees. Now, other exempt um, team members um, could be computer IT, outside salespeople. So those could be considered exempt positions. But when we speak of general dentists or specialist offices, unless you have multiple location with a you know, regional director or corporate level um, employees, chances are most dental team members are going to be non-exempt. Okay. Now, what does that mean? And, and, and going back to exempt, it means that they um, usually work more than 40 hours. <laughs> they are paid at a higher level. Um, they are um, given, again, that authority and decision making for matters of significance. Non exempt means that this employee must make at least minimum wage. And when they work over 40 hours in a, a seven day work period, they must be paid time and a half. Okay. They must receive the overtime premium. So this is where the salary versus salary question comes into to play. Now, you might have an office manager that is paid by a salary for predictability, consistent schedule. Perfect. That works great. But the classification is still going to be most often non-exempt. 
So again, talking in broad strokes, depending on the facts of the situation, most administrators will probably not meet the exempt definition, therefore paying them a salary as a non-exempt employee is great. What you want to think about when it comes to that um, predetermined or predefined salary is, are you making sure that they're getting paid for the time that they work? Okay. So even as a salaried employee, uh, classified as non-exempt, you still need to clock in and clock out. You still need to verify your time. That's part of the record retention requirements and the timekeeping. Um, again, keeps everything fair and equitable. People are being compensated for the time that they work. So if you have a salaried employee and for round numbers, let's just say this person gets a thousand dollars a week, okay. but they're working, you know, um, 65 hours. Well, that thousand dollars divided by 65 needs to be at minimum wage or higher. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that formula doesn't work. Okay. So, and, and what I mean by that is sometimes people are working more hours than what their salary is expecting for. Right. Um, for example, if they have a salary for a week and they're, it's based on 45 hours, or, but they consistently work 55 hours, then that's an issue. That salary also, if they're going to make it for 45 hours a week, it has to include five hours worth of premium. Okay. What does that mean? And tell me what that so, is. So again, going back to non-exempt, you must make at least minimum wage. And when you work over 40 hours, it's time and a half. So if you wake $10 an hour, it'd be $15 an hour. Um, as easy math, as you know, mm -hmm. math is not my forte. <laughs> Mine neither. <laughs> so to to make sure that when you do give a salary to an, a non-exempt employee, you want to make sure that you're accommodating or counting on all the hours you expect them to work. Okay. Let so me review. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just because I'm, <laughs> I'm following along on my note card here. Cause I'm taking now, let me hear. First thing I'm going to say is this is why you need an expert to review everything because my brain already hurts. Okay, so <laughs> it's really great to have a trusted resource like Robin say, hey, Robin, can you just look at this? And she's like, okay, you need to check a few more boxes. We're good. We just need to check right. a few more boxes. Number two, don't right. panic if you're a dentist and you're like, what? No. What I'm hearing you say is you can have exempt or non-exempt employees both be hourly and salary. You just have to make sure that it checks all the boxes for the most part and that you're following the rules with all of those, which you should be, which you really should right. be. Am, am I hearing that correctly? And don't be afraid to correct me. Like I, yeah. I really. Yes, you can. Most often exempt employees though are gonna be salaried because okay. they're at a higher level. Okay, all right, cool, 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 cool. So, um, so that's the first thing is you need to know and you need to really, I think that's an important piece of your documentation in your HR department within your practice is notably stating and writing, you are an exempt or a non-exempt deploy. This is what it means in this state, blah, 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 right? Absolutely. And that begins with the hiring process along with the job description. So you, not only do you let them know how are they going to be compensated, but what are the expectations? And what are the goals and, you know, how are they going to contribute as a team member? Right. So now, that's now let's have some fun. Together. Let's have some fun with dentists. Okay. <laughs> now you guys are listening. I'm just having some fun with you. You're already just the job description thing. Now I've been doing this for 25 years. You know that that's, we're saying that everyone should do that. Very few do that. And so what most dentists I've seen is like they hire people and they go, so great. Yeah, I, I wrote, I created a job description. No, you wrote an ad. <laughs> that was an ad. And you tell people, come on in, go. And they go, where? And you go, in front or in <laughs> back. And then you're back working on teeth. And that's one of those steps. So you really do have to have this stuff in writing. And you use the magic word. It's called expectations. What did you mean by that word? Like, how important is expectations when it comes to all this stuff? It absolutely is huge because a team member has to understand, A, how do they earn their paycheck? Mm -hmm. And B, when there is some incongruencies, 
that there is something to go back to to say, wait a minute, this is what I understood. So having it in writing is key. It's not only for the team members understanding, but for protection of the doctor so that they can say, yes, I'm following all the employment compliance laws that I need to follow for my particular practice in my state. And you know, this is where we start our relationship and our channels of communication. Putting it in writing means that there is less chance of, oops, wait, nobody ever told me that, or uh, I thought it was this way. Putting it in writing lessens the chance of miscommunication. And when push comes to shove, there's no, he said, she said, or I thought right. she meant that, or he's, he promised me this. You know, it, it's, it's like every lawyer everywhere will tell you if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Much I like love... the patient records, right? Yeah. So making sure that you establish this long-term, highly competent, quality care relationship with your new hire or employee. And you know what, at any given time, you can, you can step back and, and put it in writing, you know, today, even if you don't have it. So putting it in writing is really, really important for that employer employee relationship, right? No misunderstanding, no question marks. This, th these are your hours. This is your schedule. These, this is what it's expected of you. These are your benefits and this is what you're going to be compensated. Yeah. Now two, I'm, I'm speaking to the listener. If you're a dentist listening now, number one, if you're like me, you went into this cause you like people and you're a wuss like me, you know what I mean? So you don't really like the difficult conversation. They're hard, you know? Right. And so just always lean into be clear don't try to be nice because you trade one for the other. Number two, that's why, and again, this might like sound like a hard sell. Maybe it is. This is why you could just have a trusted resource that can put all this together and they can have these, you know, clear conversations because you're exactly right. The more clarity, the less problems you have. Also, too, if you have any conflict, that eventually turns into crisis at some point. Now, in a world where team members are crazy important, let me also say this to any dentist. It's, this is not the primary reason people come to work for you. It's very important. It's crazy important. But what they what you what I want to keep you you're focused on is like they gotta love what you're all about, the why, the core values, your purpose, your vision. That's like the that's the whole gist of it. And then when that isn't in place, all of these other things become potential liabilities. You know, so as a dentist, you might be thinking, well, it's, you don't understand, like it's nasty out there. It is for people that don't have a good relationship and a good base. So like don't get don't get misconstrued. Don't get off target. Like you got to have your core values, your vision, the purpose. You got to really take care of your team members. And then these are the pieces. I'm not, I'm not like giving them less value. Maybe I am, but like, it's, it's the, it's the pieces that have to be put in place after that, because now you can start to really work together with people um, in that respect. Would you agree with any of that? Absolutely. Or? No, yeah. I, I agree with all of it. All of this, these are the pieces of the puzzle or the ingredients of the recipe for success. Um, it, you can't have one without the other and expect it to be a high functioning practice. Uh, those that are high performing, those that are profitable, those that have that culture that they've created, they have all of these pieces and parts. And you know what, if there's a listener out there that says, I don't have any of this, you know what, today's the day you can start. Amen. It's never too late. Yeah, so great. Now, you're going to help me because I'm going to be vulnerable with you. And I'm going to bring 25 years of that's the way we've always done it to this <laughs> table. And then you can dispel them. And so here we go. You know, it's been my anecdotal belief. Now, again, everybody has their own convictions and these are mine. And so they don't doesn't mean they're right. But I've always loved the um, salary approach. Number one, because a lot of things go away when you just do salary. You don't, and I'll tell you a little bit more why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expose myself here and just say this. Like I, and most notably, many years ago, I had a team member who was really nice, but she was, all she thought about was hourly. And I remember trying to get on a plane to go to a conference. And I said, hey, can you make an adjustment to these flyers? And she was like, well, it's almost five o'clock. And I was like, I know, I got to leave. And she's like, well, I leave at five. I was like, oh, no. And I, it wasn't her fault. It was that we had created a culture with that role that she was like, I'm only here till five. 
you know? So I know you're going away for a couple of days, but I got to get out of here, you know? So, and it was at that point, I'm like, I can't have this. Like I can't, it, so that was one piece that's just always burned in my brain. And maybe I should see a therapist for that. But like, I also like the idea of the predictability. So when you're on salary or most of your team members or all of them, they are committed and you know what your budget is. And so at Act Dental here, I mean, every employee that gets hired, I mean, we only do payroll once a month. You might say, you shouldn't do that. I mean, we do it once a month. I mean, I, Sarah and I get paid once a month, you know, like everybody else does. It's very easy for budgeting. So I know exactly what our payroll is. My team members know exactly what they're going to get paid. I never get a question like, hey, am I getting a check this week? Or like, it's, it's very, very predictable. What are the potential liabilities or pitfalls in that thinking? Um, it, it's, it's a great way, Kirk, again, setting those expectations. You live and learn. And, and you just described all the things that people love about salary. You know, they know I'm going to get paid once a month and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing illegal about that. You can set up your, your pay, whatever you want. And I will tell you, um, it certainly helps people budget their money better, doesn't it? <laughs> oh <laughs> once my a gosh. Month, you know, yes. I don't have the great. third payroll in a month. You know what right, I mean? Exactly. Like <laughs> So everybody gets to budget your your team member and the company. So yeah. so that's a beautiful thing, and that's really what the predictability about the salary is, and everybody can count on that. The pitfalls are when you do um, a salaried employee. What I you still have to watch your hours. They still mm -hmm. have to track their hours. For so sure. as a non exempt employee, they still have to track their hours. I would recommend that somebody who pays their team on salary once a quarter go back and audit. Mm -hmm. Are we in um, alignment with what the expected hours per week were, um, what the hourly rate calculates out, you know, through the salary, and did we miss any overtime um, time frames during that pay period? So. While you have a once a month salary, assuming 40 hours a week times four, 160 hours, right? Yeah. Anything above and beyond that would then be qualified as time and a half as mm -hmm. a premium. So if you understood and explained to your new hire that we get paid once a month, it's based on a 40 hour work week. Um, these are, you know, this is the compensation it's going to be, I'll say again, thousand dollars a week, it's $4,000 a month. This is, you know, you'll get paid on the fifth of the month. This is what it covers. Any questions <laughs> Right now, some of those weeks might be holidays or maybe they get sick. So you have to have that conversation too, that, okay, if you work 40 hours in a work week, we anticipate that there's going to be five recognized holidays. The right. salary includes all that. Um, if you're out sick, um, it includes all that. So that 40 hours includes everything, vacation, time off, et cetera. So you have to consider everything that that salary is going to cover, whereby hourly employees, it's a little bit different. They handle it a little bit different. Just if you do the salary, I would recommend a, a quarterly audit uh, to make sure that you are still legally meeting those wage and hour laws of 40 hours a week. Um, and in California, it's a little bit different. So they have their own wage and hour laws, um, and, but that you are still compensating your team. And, and, and if you discover in your audit that you're a few hours off or you owe them overtime or whatever it is, then you just make it up in the next pay period. Um, so again, knowing that you're the, Team members are tracking their hours. Yeah. They're still submitting a timesheet. They're getting paid once a month. You just want to audit every quarter. I love that. So if you're taking notes at home like I am, you know, this is all about best practices. Just check these boxes. Number one, have an expert. Number two, do a quarterly audit. Number three, even if they're salary, it's probably a good idea whether you have Dentrix or EagleSoft. Everybody just logs in and it's a formal, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm leaving. And they keep track of anything else. Now, I have to ask this because I'm a big CE junkie too. So let's mm -hmm. say my team members, we work four days a week. I'm a dentist. Everything has been clearly outlined. We take a lot of CE. How does that play into what you've just said? 
Um, well, it would not be part of the salary. It, okay. You would have to then re, uh, recalculate it to get that hourly rate. Mm -hmm. So then you get to have that conversation. Okay, this we're having a CE event on Friday. This is what you're going to be compensated. Now, right. CE is handled a little bit differently. It really has nothing to do with um, whether your salary or, or, or um, hourly exempt or not exempt. What it comes down to, again, federal government's involved, so they have their wonderful definitions. If the continuing education event relates to their job, is outside hours, um, gosh, there's four that I can't think of right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but there are certain criteria that the CE event um, has to meet in order for the employer to be responsible for compensating the team member. Okay. And... Um, when that happens, then you get to decide if it's on a day that you normally don't see patients, um, you can pay them at a different capacity work rate. Anytime there's a CE event, the government says, hey, you're not performing your hygiene duties. You're not right. performing your dental assisting duties or your front office duties. Therefore, you still need to compensate this person for attendance and in some cases travel time, but it can be different than what you normally pay them to do their essential job duties. All right, good. This is So this is consistent <laughs> with what I've always known and what we've always suggested. And we call it, a, you know, it's, you, you have your basic job responsibilities and then explaining to a new team member and it really go, everything goes back to core values. Like one of ours is always be growing, which means we take courses, we do all these things. And so I'm gonna recommend or require that you attend a certain amount of CE that are outside of hours. And in that, we've got a negotiated training salary, which means I'm investing you as a person. We're not doing our day-to-day -day jobs. Is that pretty accurate? How that? How Absolutely. I, okay. Good. I like that. Um, I like that. Um, what did you say? An invested training rate or something? No. Uh, and a, uh, Gosh, I, I can't remember what I just said. An adjusted... Um, <laughs> No, it's a, it's a negotiated training or ne date. Negotiated or, training rate. I like that. You know, yeah. or investment date or CE date. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. It's got to come from your heart. But it's really like, hey, we're going to invest in developing people here. And so here's what that means. These aren't client-facing days. These are speaker-facing days, which means we go and we have fun as a team. And it's outside the realm of our normal Monday through Thursday. And it's an important part of our core values. As you can see, one of our core values is whatever it is. And so that becomes a natural way for you to describe it. It's also pretty special because a lot of people don't do that in dentistry. Now, again, you know, Robin, you're just reminding me, we got to check all the boxes. Now, I don't want to like, I love California. It's one of my favorite places to visit. And my heart goes out to you guys because it's also one of the most complex. And so this is where you just need to know the details of it because I've said things in California and people have come up to me and go, we can't do that in this state. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys do have your own rules here. Um, so love the state, don't love the <laughs> laws, but uh, so just make sure you check the boxes and you could create something crazy special on this. Now, I got to ask other questions too. Okay, so I got this kind of hybrid model, you know, like I got this whole hygiene, you know, salary, but they kind of get paid commission. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, people can define this. So wh what are your suggestions on that? Like even go back to the basic elements of that question, salary versus commission versus hourly and hygiene. Do you have any thoughts on that? Again, it goes back to how are they classified? Okay. In in this in that particular case, um, I, I actually have a practice in South Carolina that um, he just hired a, a hygienist on commission. She is a awesome producer. That's what motivates her. Mm -hmm. So you know now it's tax time. Do we ten ninety nine her? You know, it does. She, is she entitled to benefits? You know, what do we do? It all goes back to the classification and that will be your guide as to how you um, you know classify her or how you pay her the non-exempt rules will always apply and, and again it doesn't matter salary commission daily rate however you want to pay them it has to meet those definitions for non-exempt so if you pay her on commission she's getting a percentage of what she produces four days a week now, what happens if she's out sick? The conversation should have ha happened sure. that you don't produce, you don't get paid. But that percentage, she's still tracking her hours so that on our quarterly um, audit, 
based on what we've paid her as a commission, the hours that she worked and what she produced, is all of that still in alignment? Mm -hmm. Did we anticipate and set the expectation? Do we need to change that percentage? Are we finding that we're dipping below that federal minimum wage for South Carolina? You know, what, what, uh, what gaps do we have to fill when we do our audit? For the most part, though, I would anticipate that you can estimate how much you think she's going to produce, what percentage you want to pay her as a commission, and then back it off. Well, you know, we anticipate you'll work 36 hours. This is what it will translate into based on this level of production. Anything above that, you know, on a quarterly audit, you'll either get more or you'll have to make it up, you know, whatever it might be. I love that. The quarterly audit allows you to be able to reset things. We're going to try this for a quarter. We're going to audit everything. This is what I'm expecting. This is what we're expecting of you. And if you fall short of the expectations, obviously we will renegotiate what we've agreed to at that point. And it's a set appointment. You're telling the team member, and in all fairness to the team member, you're giving them a clear line of sight in how to succeed. They know really good ones. Let me just share this with you guys. If you're listening, really good team members love accountability. They love it. The bad ones, uh, there's no bad ones out there, but the less accountable ones don't like accounting. Do you know what I mean? They don't want to talk numbers. They don't want, you know, it's all based on a feeling. So I think in all fairness, you know, we've got to take the emotion out of this. And that's where this benefits everybody. Just it's written down. It goes back to what you said. Now, I also don't want to stay on just one side of the fence. Let's talk about the benefits of hourly and the pitfalls of hourly. What would you say about that? Well, you know, again, the benefits of hourly is you're tracking time, you're getting paid for the hours that you work. That is like plain and simple. There's no negotiation. There's no mystery to it whatsoever. There's nothing really to calculate. You work 40 hours, you get $10 an hour, you get $400, you know, whatever it might be. Um, It is something that most people understand. They can, you know, um, budget or know what to expect. Um, which is very similar to the salary if they know that I have a consistent schedule and occasionally I might have to work through my lunch Mm -hmm. or occasionally I might have to work after hours or come in early for a team meeting or something like that. But I still know that when I clock in and I clock out, my time is recorded, I'm going to be paid those hours at the rate that I was informed about and I agreed to. Um, If you have somebody though, that consistently works overtime, then th- that's a pit, you know that that's the pitfall. That is right. something that you just have to plan on. Okay, the regular hourly rate is twenty five dollars an hour, and when they work overtime, that's going to jump up to what thirty seven and a half dollars an hour. So if you consistently, you have to budget for it. But if somebody consistently works overtime, maybe you do want to have that conversation for salary. Yeah. Um, but again depending on the classification, exempt or non-exempt. That's really what's going to drive what you are legally required to do. Yeah, and in a world where it's very different now, you know, the other thing that we didn't talk about is, um, that I'd love for you to comment on, is the entire package of benefits that you can offer in a full-time situation. You've got companies that have figured this out, like Starbucks can offer full-time benefits with part-time employment. And they, you know, that's a company, they have their own kind of micro universe. And so a lot of times, I mean, what are the trends you're seeing? Like, if I hear the great resignation one more time, I think I'm just going to throw up. I mean, I get it. I get it. But this is where the challenge becomes for you as a dentist is like, it's got to be bigger than just a job or hourly. You have to understand what's going on in the world. And people have to like who they are as a result of working for you. And they can see a future. And so I have learned that a big part of this is the security and the safety of the, you know, knowing, hey, look, I got a, I got a company, I've got an owner that's got my back, they've got a 401k, they've got health benefits, they've got other things. From your perspective, how important is that right now in dentistry? Huge. How it's huge? absolutely huge. Um, I would say I have candidates that I speak to daily that um, say, you know, what's most important to me is I need to have health health insurance. Right. Um, and I want to feel appreciated. And, you know, I have practices that can't afford the, the, the health insurance. However, 
they do try to create, come up with creative ways that will offset that because they know that they can't offer it. So, right. you know, they might offer wellness, they might offer a gym membership, um, they might offer parking, they might offer, um, you know, a hundred dollar daycare, you know, offset or whatever it might be. Um, they try to get creative because it really does come down to Kirk, as you mentioned earlier, it's, it's not just one thing, it's the whole package. Right. Um, and what, a lot of candidates are looking for is that work-life balance. Mm -hmm. I know that's very nebulous <laughs> and, and it'll be defined differently for everyone, but people just like, they want to know that they're appreciated. They want to know that their efforts are being recognized and that they're taking home a fair and reasonable wage. They don't want to feel taken advantage of. And so having those conversations of, you know what, our budget can't afford more than $20 an hour, but let's put our heads together. Let's put some performance goals and practice goals in place. And when we ex meet or exceed that, then I want to be able to give you a bonus, you know, each quarter, or I want to be able to reward your efforts because we met the, you know, or we exceeded the collections goal for the past three months, you know, whatever it might be. So it's not just about the dollar per hour or, you know, total salary package. It really is how can we create more opportunities to reward people for the work that they're doing. Love it. And rather than putting it in a defined, you know, base salary, um, you know, come up with other, uh, if we exceed the goals, we'll take you on a trip. If we exceed the goals, you'll get two more vacation days. You know, whatever it might be, um, it, it you have to think outside the box. And as you've already um, talked about to Kirk in, in many years that I've known you, is that hidden paycheck. Yeah. People don't understand what the employer has to do on behalf of the employee. Yeah. Uh, and that is all the taxes, all the special stuff, all the laws, you know, there are some states that you absolutely must um, pay sick leave. Uh, some have, you know, certain other requirements that they have to do. But beyond that, a lot of benefits are discretionary. Right. And that means it's at the doctor's affordability without taking money out of his own pocket um, or her pocket that, um, you know, there's no such thing as required paid holidays. There's no such thing as required pay time off or required vacation. Right. Dentists don't have to do that. Dentists also don't have to offer free dental care to their yeah. team members or their family members. There's no law that says that they have to. You know, some states, yes, you have to provide sick leave, but all the other ones are discretionary. And so what does that mean? That means that the doctor doesn't have to, but he or she may choose to because that's part of how they show their appreciation. Yeah. And there were a lot of practices that opened up after, after the shutdown. I won't say the word, <laughs> but they couldn't bring back those discretionary benefits because they were in survival mode. And yeah. they figured, you know what? I can't offer these. I'd rather have my doors open. I'd rather employ you and pay your wage than trying to figure out all, all the other stuff. Totally. So as they've slowly come back, yes, they're introducing it more and more. Um, and those practices that ha continue to survive and thrive, you know, team members, please thank your doctors for being able to be in a position that is financially healthy, that they're able to offer these discretionary benefits. So it's not just about what you get in your paycheck. It's everything together. Uniform, CE, fun yeah. stuff, you know having a beautiful office to work in, you know, up-to-date equipment, all of it comes into what I call the, you know, the huge compensation package. Yeah. And I want to go back to what you said. You said financially healthy too. I also want, you know, this show is about helping you guys. So I also want to like, let's talk about the causes and not necessarily try to treat symptoms all the time. Cause I get to see these feeds, you know, a lot of dentists are angry because they're like, is it always about the dollar? I just lost another great team member and they are getting paid more. That will happen. But the thing is guys, I'll just say this is like, your practice, you might be frustrated by listening to this going, you don't understand my practice. My team compensation is 37%. I can't give them any more. Well, I would say to you, if I was coaching you, that's stupid because that's too high. It's not that you're paying your team members 
too much. Your practice doesn't collect enough to be able to support its payroll. You probably don't have any systems in place. You probably don't do any education. You probably don't have like a lot of checklists in place and everybody's exhausted. So I think it's really important that your compensation levels, including the hidden paycheck of the matching FICA and all those things are in place. And that's why it's great to have an outside expert that can just slap you around and go, no, 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 you're not looking at this correctly. I have many of those people and it's great because I don't care if they don't care if I get upset. They're like, here's how this works. And then they're like, oh my gosh, because you as a dentist, if you can provide it, if your practice is healthy enough, you can give your team members an excellent wage, probably better than anyone else, but it's going to be highly contingent on how well you run your business, not how much they ask for. You agree or dis- you can always disagree with me, but do you agree with that? Oh, I'll disagree with you when I do, but I agree with all that you're saying, Kirk. It's so true. And we find that too, people, doctors start to resent team right. members that come to them, you know, I, I need a raise, I want a raise. Um, it's not just for longevity. You've shown up here for the last, you know, 10 years. It's how, how much value are you bringing to the practice? Right. So those team members that, you know, feel that maybe they are underpaid, I would highly encourage you to have a conversation with your doctor. I mean, that's the first step. Right. Figure out where the disconnect is. And the practice may not be able to afford it, but it doesn't mean that you can't find some other way to feel highly engaged and uh, appreciate it, not just maybe at the dollar. You know, sometimes team members just, kind of um, price themselves out of their bracket. Uh, you know, you just can't offer them anymore on an hourly or salary basis. So get creative on, you know, additional time off or some other um, motivator that the, the team member will appreciate because they know that they can't make more per se. And that's when, you know, setting up goals and sharing the profit um, really comes in handy for those practices that say, you know what, I can't pay more than $20 an hour. And I think, you know, I I still want to reward or or recognize. And I do want to make one comment about the hourly versus the salary. It really will be practice dependent on what makes sense for you. I find that the hourly, um, and and I guess it it goes back to, you know, how excited are you to do uh, administrative work? Because when you're going back and you have to do audits and you're looking historically with the salary, making sure everything works, that, you know, if you enjoy doing that, fantastic. Right. It is hard to predict the future. So you don't know if you're going to have to close the office because you had a water main break. That person who's salary still legally is required to get their salary, whether your office is open or not. Yeah. So that's something to consider, too. So with hourly, it's kind of that old adage, you eat what you kill, right? Right. For sure. <laughs> so you clock in, you clock out. These are the hours that you worked. These are the hours that you're going to get compensated. And if you work more hours this week, then you'll get the time and a half. You work less hours next week, you're just going to get paid for the hours that you work. If you have to close the office because of inclement weather, you're not going to get paid for the hours that were not open. You know, those are the things that make it really black and white, super simple for practices. That's why most practices that I work with are hourly because it's really clean and simple. There's no negotiation. There's no, well, what about this time? And I stayed late here and I worked over the weekend, but you right. didn't see it. And I don't think that my salary really, you know, is commensurate with the amount of time that I'm putting in. So I'd really like to renegotiate. And, you know, so again, there, there's, there's um, room for both. You just have to decide much like what kind of dentist do you want to be? What kind of business owner do you want to be? And what can the practice afford? That's why I like talking to you because you, you speak my jam, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and you also know the things that I don't know. And so, you know, I hope, hope you guys heard this. I mean, let's go back and review just a little bit. Number one, you got to have an expert. Number two, you got to do a quarterly review at all times. This is not something you go, I don't know, maybe I'll do it once a year. No, um, you do need to be able to track these things. You got to create a healthy practice. You got to have a regular check-in with your team members. I don't like the idea of a review where we're going to talk about your salary. I like the idea of like being vulnerable with people and just let them tell you because they'll tell you if there's a discrepancy and that's the opportunity as a business owner. When you have that vulnerability, vulnerability with your team member. It's not that I'm going to give you everything that you want or you request, but I want you to know we got an open dialogue here. You can't hurt my feelings. I want to create a great place for you. They will tell you 
and good people will want to help you. So create that kind of environment. So Robin, any last thoughts on the hourly or the salary thing as we bring this thing to, to a close? Do your homework. Yeah. Uh, make sure that you are following whatever wage and hour laws you have in your state. Um, if you decide you want to make the, the leap from going from salary to hourly or vice versa, give your team time to process that. Right. There are numerous questions they're going to have. Again, give them the message that you want to make sure that you're you know, paying them fairly. Um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Kirk, I know you have our uh, information for Ben Erickson. Um, make sure that, again, you have that dialogue with your team. Do what is right for your practice. Yeah. Now, I, I, I'm going to plug this more than you will. Come on. Hey, if I'm listening on Spotify or Stitcher or iTunes, how the heck do I get a hold of you? I can ask you. Can I call you and ask you questions? Uh, I prefer email. Email? Okay. Because <laughs> uh, I'm on the phone a lot uh, okay. and I'm All in right. different time zones a lot. At so least the I can email form you. Of communication is email. All and right. it's Robin, R O B Y N the letter R at bent Erickson.com. That's B E N T E R I C K S E N.com. You're the best. Thank you for being on. Awesome. I Thanks got for like, having me. Wait, 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 wait. I got like 30 more issues that we're going to cover <laughs> and you're going to help us through them in future episodes. So uh, hold tight for that guys. You'll see that or hear that uh, in the future here. But Robin, thank you for being on today. Really appreciate you. And uh, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for listening to the Best Practices Show. Hey, if you enjoyed today, which I know you did, please. <laughs> Share this with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions. Hey, if you really enjoyed it, give us a review because it helps us find other people like you. I love this profession so much that I want to keep creating a better practice and a better life for you. I want to solve your problems and I want to hang out with more people like you. So send this to your friends. And then until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching the Best Practices Show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Mm -hmm.